Ever felt that deep, window-shaking rumble in your favorite song? That sensation that makes your chest vibrate and your seat tremble beneath you? That's not just any speaker at work, it's the magic of the subwoofer, a specialized part of your sound system designed to bring those low, powerful bass notes to life. The subwoofer is the true powerhouse of your audio setup, responsible for delivering the kind of bass you can feel as much as you can hear. It's what transforms ordinary sound into an immersive cinematic experience. But did you know there's more than one way to make that bass? Subwoofers come in different shapes and designs, each with its own unique approach to producing those deep, resonant sounds. The cabinet design, in particular, plays a huge role in shaping the character and quality of the bass. It's not just about size or power, how the subwoofer is built makes a world of difference. Most people are familiar with the classic subwoofer, a big sturdy box with a large speaker and sometimes a visible hole or port. This is known as a ported or bass reflex design, and it's been a staple in car and home audio for decades. But there's another fascinating type you might not have noticed, one with a mysterious second cone that isn't wired up to anything. This is called a passive radiator, and it works in a surprisingly different way. The passive radiator design uses this unpowered cone to move air and enhance bass, offering a clever alternative to the traditional ported box. It changes how the subwoofer delivers those deep notes, often resulting in tighter, more controlled bass. Understanding the difference between ported and passive radiator subwoofers is key to finding your perfect sound. Each design has its strengths, and knowing what sets them apart can help you make the right choice for your space and your listening style. Both types can deliver incredible, room-filling bass, but they do it in unique ways that affect everything from the feel of the music to the size and placement of the subwoofer itself. Your choice depends on what you value most, raw power, tight control, compact size, or a specific bass character that matches your favorite movies and music. In this video, we'll break down how each design works, what makes them special, and help you decide which one is right for your setup. First, We'll explore the classic ported subwoofer and see how a simple tube can boost bass by letting air move in and out of the cabinet, amplifying those low frequencies. Then we'll reveal the secrets of the passive radiator and its unpowered cone, showing how it creates deep bass without the need for a port. So, let's explore the technology behind these designs and help you discover which subwoofer is the perfect match for your listening experience. Let's start with the ported subwoofer a staple in the world of car audio and home theater systems. This design is also known as a bass reflex cabinet, and it's been a favorite among audio enthusiasts for decades. It's a classic for a reason, delivering big loud bass with impressive efficiency, making every beat and explosion come alive. The key components are a powered driver and a precisely engineered port, both working together to shape the sound. The port isn't just a simple hole in the box, it's carefully tuned to reinforce the lowest frequencies, extending the bass deeper than a sealed design. When the driver moves, it pushes and pulls air, creating pressure changes inside the enclosure that interact with the port. The port lets air escape in a controlled way, adding its own resonant sound, much like the tone you get when you blow across the top of a glass bottle, but on a much larger scale. This clever design boosts bass output, making the subwoofer more efficient and powerful, so you feel the music and movie effects in your chest. You get more bass with less amplifier power, which is why ported subs are so popular for both home theaters and car music lovers who crave deep, impactful sound. They're perfect for that cinematic rumble during action scenes, or for SPL car audio for music you can truly feel, not just hear. But there's a trade-off. At high volumes, the air rushing through the port can create unwanted noise, a phenomenon known as port chuffing, which can distract from the listening experience. Good designs use flared ports or special shapes to minimize this noise, but it's still something to keep in mind, especially if you like to crank up the volume. Also, the port and the airspace it needs take up room inside the cabinet, sometimes making ported subwoofers larger and bulkier than you might expect for your space. In short, ported subs offer big, efficient bass and are ideal for those who want maximum impact but their size and the potential for port noise are the main drawbacks to consider. They're a go-to choice for car audio enthusiasts, DJs, music producers, and home theater fans who want to feel every note and explosion. Next, let's see how passive radiators tackle these challenges and offer a different approach to deep bass. 
Now let's look at the passive radiator subwoofer. It has a main power driver and a second unpowered cone, the passive radiator. Instead of a port, this cone uses air pressure changes inside the cabinet to move and create sound. When the active driver moves, it pushes and pulls the passive radiator, which adds to the bass output. The radiator is weighted to resonate at low frequencies, just like a port, but without needing a long tube. The big advantage? Size. Passive radiators allow for deep bass in much smaller cabinets. That's why you'll find them in compact speakers, sound bars, and portable Bluetooth devices. Another plus no port noise. The passive radiator moves silently, even at high volumes. This means cleaner, more controlled bass, especially when you crank up the volume. You get the efficiency of a ported design, but in a smaller, quieter package. It's a smart solution for modern, space-saving audio gear. But how do these two designs stack up side by side? Let's compare these two popular subwoofer designs head-to-head -head and see how they stack up in real-world use. Ported subwoofers are known for their high efficiency, delivering impressive amounts of bass for the power used. This makes them a favorite for those who want maximum output without needing a massive amplifier. However, to achieve truly deep bass, ported subs often require larger cabinets, which can take up significant space in your car or room. If you have the space, though, they can fill it with powerful room-shaking low-end. Passive radiator subwoofers, on the other hand, can match that deep bass performance in a much smaller enclosure. This makes them ideal for small cars, apartments, bedrooms, or any space where you want big sound without a big box. Their compact size means you can tuck them away more easily, and they're often chosen for modern, minimalist setups. Another key difference is noise. Ported subs can suffer from chuffing, that is, audible air turbulence at high volumes, especially with smaller or poorly designed ports. This can be distracting during quiet movie scenes or music with subtle bass. Passive radiators, by contrast, move silently, eliminating port noise entirely and keeping your listening experience clean and immersive. When it comes to sound character, ported subs are famous for their big, booming presence. They're perfect for home theaters and bass-heavy music genres, delivering that chest-thumping impact that makes action movies and concerts come alive. Passive radiators, meanwhile, offer tighter, more controlled bass. They excel at revealing detail and texture in music, making them a favorite among audiophiles and music producers who want accuracy and nuance in every note. Cost is another important factor. Ports are simple, inexpensive components, so ported subwoofers are generally more budget-friendly. Passive radiators are more complex to design and manufacture, which can make these subs pricier, especially in high-end models. So if you're looking for maximum bass per dollar, ported subs are often the way to go. But if you value compact size, cleaner output, and a more refined look, passive radiators are worth the investment. Ultimately, it's a trade-off between efficiency, size, noise, and cost. Each design has its own set of strengths and compromises. Your choice will depend on your available space, your budget, and the kind of bass experience you want, whether it's earth-shaking power or precise, detailed sound. Both designs have their unique advantages, so pick the one that best fits your needs and listening style. Now, let's take a closer look at some real-world products to see where each design truly shines. Both designs are everywhere, but each dominates certain categories. Ported subwoofers rule in large spaces, think SUVs, trucks, concerts, theaters, and big home theaters, where maximum output is key. They're also common in floor-standing speakers for full-range sound. Passive radiators excel in compact gear-portable Bluetooth speakers, sound bars, and small bookshelf speakers. They deliver deep bass from tiny enclosures, making them perfect for modern, minimalist setups. High-end soundbars and desktop speakers use passive radiators for cinematic bass without bulky boxes. The choice of design is all about balancing performance, size, and aesthetics. Next, let's talk about how these subs actually sound different. So which subwoofer wins? The answer depends on you, your space, your budget, and your taste. For big cinematic impact in a large space, choose a ported sub. For tight, clean bass in a small space, go with a passive radiator. Audiophiles who crave detail and accuracy will love the control of passive radiators. Both designs can sound amazing. Just pick what fits your needs. Use what you've learned to make a smart choice for your setup. Now it's your turn. Which subwoofer box do you prefer? Share your experiences and thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.